all right this is part two of the guidance on how you can buy your best content creative or editing pc or laptop for yourself in this video we are gonna look three major aspects which you have to really deal with before buying any kind of laptop that is regarding the display ram and also the portability and the port So in the market there is a lot of marketing puff going around and new and new companies are pitching very good displays as displays which have higher refresh rate. The main misconception is that people tend to believe higher refresh rate screens tend to be better displays. It is but not in most cases. If you are going for a gaming system or a system which you have interactive content then higher refresh rate would help you. The display would be more smooth. But bumping up the refresh rate does have a downside. This is because of a process known as pull down technique. So, refresh rate is the amount of times the screen refreshes itself in one second. So 60Hz display means it refreshes 60 times in one second. Playing at 24fps on a 60Hz display, the simultaneous frame has to be repeated per second so that the frame rate issue is being solved. Let me make the math simpler. When you are playing a 30fps video on a 60Hz display, each frame will be repeated twice every second so that the, this frame rate issue is being solved. If your graphics card is NVIDIA GeForce, then you would probably had heard of this term known as G-Sync. So G-Sync is a special chip inside NVIDIA processors so that this eradicating of frame rate issue is being dealt inside the graphics card. Enough said, that is why smartphone companies try to brand their displays having higher refresh rate screen because nowadays games in smartphone are really high end graphics and these tend to play really smooth if you have a high refresh rate screen. Also, these smartphones are really interactive content devices so the experience for the user will be really smooth if there is a higher refresh rate screen. Well the truth is it doesn't matter as much as you think. Because for us as people who are creators, you really don't need a high refresh rate screen. What you in fact need is a really high color accurate screen. So how do you measure color accuracy and what is color accuracy? So color accuracy basically means that our eyes can perceive a lot of color and the digital system doesn't have that much capability as our naked eyes. So the capability of the display to show you how much accurate the color that is actually in the file to that that is displayed on the display is measured as color accuracy and it is actually internationally accepted to measure this color accuracy in sRGB, Adobe RGB or CMYK. It's actually dealt with percentage so more the percentage more color accurate the screen is. If you just stepped into the field of any editing or Photoshop you would definitely have known or read about this hexagonal value of color. So even if the screen shows you one color that may not be the color that the file really really had what i mean is like this is a red color well these two are not red colors actually <laughs> the first first color has a hexagon value of this much and the second color has a hexagon value of this much when a program starts it tries to first capture all the data so ram is only used to help computer to find this data really really fast so even if you have a 32 gigs of ram it would be only used in the first part where the program starts to find out where these cache files are actually written inside the system and locate that cache files so that the program can display the files to you and when you're editing or in the editing process of in any video editing software ram is not much used it's just used around like maybe 30 to 40 percentage or even less after finishing the long editing process when you render it out as i said 
it's all a cache file if you have not yet seen what is a cache file you could check out the first video and get a deep knowledge on how and what is happening when you see a video file in any software so after you had done all your editing you have to replace the cache file with the original file along with the effects and the sound effects and the visual color grading that you had given to the cache file technically the program has to find the original file and do everything on that original file and render it out to you so this process is where the cpu will be used as well as the ram and the gpu will be used in between ram is not much of a use so that's why i said 16 gigs of ram is a really good number just to get the dice rolling so ports go in a long way in this digital world because like if you are really updated on these apple devices apple was the first device to invent a laptop without having cd drive and when a time when cd transfer speed was coming up they had actually established a market of laptops where there has no cd ports at all thinking back then it was really atrocious but now newer laptops are not having any cd drives at all who the hell uses cds anyway right now <laughs> Even if you have a badass external graphics card or a really good external storage, it has to transfer back and forth the data in microseconds so that this delay of transfer wouldn't be noticed by us as a gamer or as an editor. There comes the use of the newest ports like Thunderbolts, which is a huge change because from one Thunderbolt board, you could fire up an external GPU as well as two monitors and provide the best performance from all three devices simultaneously from one port. What's the party for? I just got a keyboard. I'm a computer now, like you. So you have more power? Like an Intel Core i7 processor? Like I said, I just got a keyboard. But you're running full office, not just the app version, right? I don't like where this is going. So there is a huge confusion amongst the people. So whether you should go for a Mac OS and enjoy the Mac security or come to a new Windows platform and really enjoy the freedom inside it. All that really turns down to what type of person you are and what type of style you prefer. Like I said, it all depends on your personal style. If you're a person who really uses MS Office, then do go for a Windows OS system because any kind of MS Office, let it be Excel, PowerPoint, Word, it doesn't really run as smooth as in a Windows OS system. And also, it has a lot of crashes inside a Mac system. But on the other side, if you're a video editor and you really want to learn and edit in PCB or Final Cut Pro, then definitely go for the Mac OS system because macOS FCP supports real-time rendering which is a really great thing in any editing software even though there lies a hack where you can partition the disk and run a Windows OS as well as a Mac OS in a system and use FCP but the major difference is not that major difference between a Mac user and a Windows user is that the off charging performance that is one thing that few people really notice if you're a person who really don't like to plug and play, plug and edit, then Mac or Apple product will be the best choice for you guys. Why? Because Windows laptops and Windows products tend to perform high or at its maximum potential when it's plugged in. While MacBooks and Apple products have no limitation of whether you're plugged in or not plugged in, they will give you the same performance either way. So this is the whole brief knowledge on how you should choose your system. If you really want to know these kind of knowledges which are really deep diving on concepts, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if this video helped you out in any way, don't forget to press the like button and hope to see you soon. Peace.